Welcome everybody. My name is Luca Berton <clears throat> and I'm going to talk you from zero to hero how to build the Ansible pilot community. So first of all, important, everything that I'm saying here is my personal opinion and doesn't reflect the one of my employer. And now we can start. <clears throat> so my name is Luca. I'm an Ansible automator shown expert based in the UK. And as you can see, I like a lot of the Helm, not the one of Kubernetes only. Um, what I'm trying to, I will show you a small demo and how you can uh, actually take advantage from uh, Ansible automation technology. As I know that somebody of you already know this technology, somebody else know, I would like to show you how it could be the practical impact of this. I'm also the proud the creator of this Ansible pilot community that is a, a YouTube channel, a website. So if you struggle with some error related to Ansible, more or less, uh, sooner or later, we're going to meet each other because I created more than 500 articles with a lot of documentation around this lovely software. It's an open source software that is actually led by the Red Hat Corporation. And if you never heard before, is an IT automation tool that is getting more like a orchestration. But now let, let's start with a fun. It starts as like a programming language and uh, sometimes it's difficult to make what we would like to do it with this programming language. As you can see, there is uh, a lot of like uh, development in a, in an ID, as well also a lot of terminal interaction. So somebody of you is already familiar with this type of uh, tool. Somebody else, no. This is why I prepared a small demo. Let's see if I'm able to share. It's still online? Cool. So a typical um, execution is called like uh, Ansible Playbook. So there is a some step that we would like to execute on the target machine. Target machine is usually a system that we would like to talk, configure. And the most easy things is actually testing the connection with a ping module. This is nothing related to the, like, uh, the network ping. It's just a, a way of testing the connection. Behind the scene is connecting via SSH and executing some Python code. Well, it looks like the, that, uh, but probably it make more sense in, uh, in this way. Uh, so let me hide the video panel. Oh, I'm struggling because it's exactly on the line that I would like to type. Ah, uh, is annoying this. Okay, here we go. So my target machine is a Ubuntu machine that I have here on my laptop. As you can see, it's the latest version with uh, Ubuntu 39, and uh, it's good to go. It just have a SSH connection installed. So what I'm trying to do is execute my, the code that I was preparing. Uh, I need to specify the inventory file and the recipe, if you are familiar with like a chef or puppet or other automation tool, and we got a green light. So which means that uh, I'm able to connect to the system. Now I would like to complicate a little bit the, the things. And I was preparing something more like a Kubernetes. So what I would like to do is inst actually installing Minikube. And I can specify a specific version, 1.14, for example. I'm running on a ARM machine, so I'm using ARM64, and I'm going, down, I'm going to download on the slash download uh, directory on my user. Same story. And simple inventory, and this code, sorry, this file is called uh, playbook YML. So is, what is going to do behind the scene is download the Minikube, verify the checksum, and try to install on the target machine. We're going to end it up with an error because, well, 
the super user is able to execute uh, the installation. So let me solve it out. Let me add a magic parameter that asks me the password for the user, for the sudo operation, and now we'll be able to install the mini queue. Cool. We got a success, as you can see. We got our case status, and but and we can verify on the target machine that Minikube version is actually the one that we would like to do it. Minikube, we are all familiar with that. It's super easy to have a, a Kubernetes cluster that we can uh, interact for, just for fun. Okay, but now I would like to complicate a little bit the things, uh, and especially I would like to understand better the performance implication. So uh, how can I optimize this uh, this execution? So in, for this, uh, I was, there are some parameters in the Ansible configuration file, and this is a plugin that enables more debugging on the screen. It's called play, call black, call back plugin. As you can see, there are some, uh, so these are like a, a, some special uh, plugin for printing out the timer for each execution. What I'm going to do is just change the playbook to, let me change to the following version. So it will be executed again. And let me launch the execution. In this way, this time it will print it out step by step, as you can see, uh, the timing of execution. And in this final report, we can see that uh, it took exactly five seconds to execute in this machine. And but there is one interesting catch. So we can break it down, the installation, the download, uh, the verification, the checksum. So imagine if you if we need to do this operation like for one million server, this one second will be one million seconds. So doing this type of analysis could be very, is very interesting. And one thing that uh, it, uh, is, is taking one second for the gathering facts, this is actually acquiring some system information that we don't need for this uh, execution. So long story short, uh, this is one example what I'm sharing with my community on my YouTube channel. And uh, if you are curious, you get all the uh, you are going to find all the code uh, in my website. So behind the scene, uh, I had a lot of fun, and I'm trying to share with, with my community a lot of like uh, example and topic like how to install on install it Ansible in all the possible Linux distribution. I tried also the most worthy things like uh, Gentoo, or I, I tried. I try to get all and try to keep up to date uh, as well. Uh, also, to uh, it was most or, more or less my journey to upskill myself and uh, how I can be, I can learn because every day I'm learning new things and every day I'm trying to share, share, share with people. Because I think that uh, if we become a better engineer, we can actually change the world. And uh, what strange things was that uh, I started just for sharing with some friend and I started receiving some feedback on uh, between people. Well, some was, uh, th there was a positive and negative. I tried to include uh, some of that. And it's nice to see that uh, some error are recurrent between uh, different people. So why shall I waste uh, half an hour to solve a, uh, a problem while another person the other part of the world. And it's fun because when people start send me uh, some idea or, or, or proposal, and wow, I didn't realize that we are more connected than we think in this way. Um, at the moment, uh, um, I'm sharing my content on YouTube. I noticed that a lot, not a lot of engineers on TikTok. This I can say, I can say for sure. And also, not a lot on Instagram, I would say. Um, I have a website, and Medium is actually working better. Stack Trace, I'm not sure. I heard a lot of uh, a lot of good intention. I don't, I don't know exactly. And these are more or less uh, my numbers. So more than 500 videos, and I recorded 
unbelievable. I call them more than 50 hours of materials. And it takes it takes a long time because just for recording one video is just for 10 minutes, there is like one hour behind the scene, more or less, because you need to start with a script, uh, record, re-record, not sure about the quality. You forgot to turn on the mic, so it's a lot of fun. And uh, yes, there are more of a 3,000 line of code. You just bump in the website, and if you are lucky, I already solved the, the problem for you. And it's more interesting to do all the engagement uh, analysis because uh, a lot of people not only share the feedback, but they also communicate. Uh, um, there is a lot of data science behind, and I'm able to, to see what have like the spiky moment. Now there is this trend, like even driven automation, and it seems that people are super engaged in this way. And you can see that um, at least my community would like to see more code. So this is what I'm trying to do it, like uh, let's speak more code. Because, uh, okay, I'm doing a lot of this type of analysis and more or less this is the distribution worldwide, people from uh, especially states and India, and it's fun because uh, it seems that th <clears throat> things pile up. The more I I learn about one technology, the more is mm, uh, the more is shared. So, for example, I did a series about uh, integration between Ansible and VMware, another series about uh, Ansible and Kubernetes, and there are different type of mm, uh, audience, but they they give me very interesting feedback. And also some use cases that I didn't have thought before. Um, Ansible has an official uh, newsletter. It's called Bullhorn, and it is weekly nowadays. And uh, uh, when I have something very remarkable, I share it with, with them. So if you would like to be up to date on the project, I really recommend you to, share, to subscribe to this newsletter because it's, it's not so famous. But a lot of like changes in the project are actually found out on this bullhorn. Um, do you remember the log for shell? Uh, I was I was the author of the Ansible playbook for auto, for detecting the the vulnerability in a lot of different machines. <clears throat> so I thought that it was natural using Ansible to uh, scan all the machine in our network. So if you take a look, that is official uh, on the website. There is like uh, this playbook that is it does only the connection and uh, verify that uh, if a system, if, like a COVID test, is vulnerable or not vulnerable. <laughs> and uh, what else? Oh yes, I'm also attending conferences, and you are lucky enough to to be here and getting a little bored. <laughs> Thank you guys. And what else? Oh yes, I was. I was just a few months ago in Berlin and it was a lot of fun because there was an official Ansible community and it's great that some people that we saw each other around the world and now we call friends and we keep in touch and sometimes we have some uh, crazy idea together. Like uh, I'm working with one guy and I'm writing a book, but this is a different story because I already published uh, three books about Ansible. Yeah. I'm a bit verbose, like all the Italians, and uh, I'm super proud because this these are pr practically brand new. It was the first was released in December, twenty two, so one year ago. The second in May and the third in July. Now I'm actually writing something else. I'm not sure if I will be able to publish by um, before Christmas. It's about the Ansible automation platform. And well, it's a journey getting published. And to be honest, not very rewarding, but it's a lot of fun. So if somebody needs some advice uh, on this journey, I will be happy to share with you maybe later on. And well, what else? If this project also allow me to connect with a lot of different community and people. You might know some of this brand, other um, might be completely new. I would like to give a shout to the Ansible Lockdown. That is an incredible uh, resource where you can find like a CIS uh, uh, benchmark automated with Ansible. 
and they are really working a lot uh, to detect uh, a vulnerability in our system. Another really interesting project that I'm working with is XLab, is a company in Slovenia that uh, they are creating a tool for like uh, keeping up to date our code in Ansible. So if you want to try, is is a really interesting tool and other companies that you might probably already already know. Uh, I'm using a lot of tools. This is just just a few. I just included some logos. I'm sure that uh, a lot of people struggle to to detect Audacity, the one for audio post-processing, because when you publish, especially with Plural site or Udemy, they would like uh, people like to hear clear the voice. Uh, apparently, the voice is eighty percent of the delivery in uh, in every, especially in this type of technical content. Okay, I learned a lot of things in doing this journey, especially, I don't know, public speaking, because for me it was totally difficult. Also, how to make video post-processing, uh, how to use all these audio interfaces, and uh, okay, how to be here also. I like, I like to talk with people, so if, I hope that there will be any opportunity to chat with all of you guys about your challenges and uh, what you're doing in your life. For 2024, I don't know exactly what I would like to do it, but I would like to <clears throat> expand this project to different technology, not only Ansible. I'm thinking that Kubernetes will be very interesting technology, uh, especially for the future, because, well, we are seeing a lot of like uh, buzzword inside there artificial intelligence, and I think that uh, Kubernetes will play an interesting role in the future. And I think that's all. If we're cu I'm really looking forward if you would like to follow me on uh, my website and all my social media. So any questions for Luca, you can either ask them in the room and have this this microphone or you can type them and on that same link before. So any questions for Luca? Okay, maybe not in the room. Oh, yeah. Uh, cool. Is it is it on? Maybe not. No problem. Oh, yeah. Um, thank you for sharing your experience. I think you, what from what you shared, I hear you really busy man. And I wonder if that's uh, always was so and you were just making more of that what you already knew or at some point you just changed your careers and decided to generate more content like you do. Uh, and if that's the case i was wondering like what was the driver if you are open to share how, how did that journey actually start for you thank you a really great question so it started during the pandemic i was bored like everybody i was at home and well there's not a lot of things to do it i was already watched all the Netflix things that uh, I was interested. And when I started, I just say, oh, let's give it a thought. And the most pivotal moment was when I was publishing one video and 10 people watch it. But now it makes no sense. But for me, it was just incredible. So some people were interested in the stuff. It was a long journey because, well, the video was terrible. I wasn't able to speak. I was completely not taking pauses on... <laughs> explaining and somehow it worked also on my career because uh, uh, I, I was working for Red Hat at the time in the Czech Republic and then uh, there was an opportunity to come here in the UK and my actual employer watched take a look on uh, what I did and say well of course you're 
you know, you, you know what they are doing. I don't think that I'm the best Ansible in the world, but every day I have a commitment. So I'm trying to learn something new every day. And it's incredible because this project has, uh, is like every open source project, is a combination of a lot of different little projects underneath. And somehow it's not, it's difficult to keep track of everything. I don't know. So it seems easy from the beginning, but then when you go deeper on how the connection is actually performed and how can I optimize this stuff, you drive it. I was driving crazy. Like I hope that I was not too much technical on the demo and maybe somebody of you is curious to keep going and see the, how this adventure goes. I don't know. I think that in the as engineers, somehow we are working with a lot of the interesting technology and we are really impacting the world. But sharing and communicating is a great skill, also. Thank you. I think we have a question, a couple of questions on here. Okay, was it the the hat for Red Hat Linux on the previous slide, Gold 2024? I'm not sure what. What do you mean? What is the hat? Um, was it the hat? Was it the hat on the slide? Okay. Oh, was that from Red Hat? Okay. What's your view on Fedora versus Ubuntu? Oh yes, that is was my original Fedora because each employee of Red Hat uh, used to get the Red Hat the Fedora for the. Uh, um, yes, I still have at home and it's a lot of fun. Uh, what's your view on Fedora versus Ubuntu? Well, there are two wonderful distributions, and I think that there are for different use cases. But it's not like a, it's not like a fanboy like Apple or Google. <laughs> I think that the market is big enough for everybody. Uh, is there another question underneath? I need this. So, how can Ansible Playbook help adopt machine learning models? Wow. Good question. <laughs> I think uh, that uh, maybe it's not playing a lot on the machine learning model, but this, the machine will be still need to be manageable and managing my manually is so annoying. Like I was sharing to you, installing Minikube is easy if you are doing for one machine, it's just one command, but one command when you have mm, 10, 10, 100, one, 1,000, 1 million server is still, is a lot, is a lot of manual work. So I think that the more we find a way to optimize in our workflow, so we can dedicate to uh, save our time for really interesting activity. Thank you. Um, and the third one, let me scroll down a bit. Have you read Jeff Gearing's Ansible for DevOps book? Do you, do you like it? Yes, I really would like to meet Jeff, actually. I try to contact him in all the possible way. And I think Jeff is incredible. He's one of the person that inspired me to do this type of activity, this type of uh, speak. He's, I really like his style and he's really improving a lot, especially on the RAS integrated system for Raspberry Pi. It's really a front-end technology. So that also made a video with Mr. Beast. So it, it is really incredible. He created this this book is one of like one of a Bible about Ansible and is very popular. So I think it's, it creates a great content. I also try to contact Michael Dehan, that is, was the original creator of Ansible and now is working on uh, uh, Ansible in Rust, the same this way. It's called uh, Jet. So if somebody is curious, this is like a, a different project and it, it is very, it's very promising. I tested one touch preview and it's cool. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. Any more in the room? Otherwise, I'm going to finish up there. Please, round of applause for Luca. Yeah.